In the Arts in Brazil, Pietro Maria Bardi wrote Museum is a fine word in itself, evoking thoughts of myth and legend, and the romantic idea of reverence for the vestiges of the past. Even if it may have lost something of its glamour, especially in Europe, through the inroads of bureaucracy and its exploitation as a tourist attraction. Moreover, it is still too easy to think of a museum in terms of dusty, dimly lit premises with a general odor of staleness, enough to smother the vital flame of any work of art or destroy all interest in the most remarkable products of nature. It's the smell of mothballs that's the trouble. The exhibits themselves often seem mortified, as if the life had been drained out of them until they evoke no sense of the past, nor in any way stir the imagination. There is also the mania of sheer accumulation for long rows of ornaments all alike, or practically so and the paucity of sound technical information necessary for a minimum of understanding, together with an overabundance of fanciful anecdotes furnished by ignorant custodians and garrulous guides. All this when we reflect that the word art once meant the arts of grammar, logic and rhetoric, or pure polemics in other words, leads us to hope that most museums will bring themselves up to date and turn their attention to a public eager to learn rather than to the highly academic requirements of a few specialists. One need only visit the richly stocked Louvre or the immense British Museum with these considerations in mind to see what is meant. The inadequacy of the presentation is invariably due to the unsuitability of the premises, however famous the buildings may be in themselves. They were not, as a rule, built with the idea that they would be used as museums and even railway stations built a century ago are no longer adequate today. It is not our intention to depreciate the work of numerous colleagues, nor to suggest that they spent most of their time shut up in their studies, immersed in academic work rather than thinking about modernizing their museums. Every museum director has to answer to a board of trustees, a government department or the like, and as often as not, his reports and requests get passed on to successive levels of higher authority, until the wind blows them away. Inspired by the example of Sao Paulo, the idea of new museums has rapidly spread throughout Brazil. Museography is a new science. What is required is an entirely new attitude towards the museum. The visitor should be helped to understand the exhibits, to come to love some of them, and even provided with the necessary data for a solution of the various problems they may present. A new method of presenting museum objects is required, therefore. Most museum directors like to keep the past, and the recent past as well for that matter, well isolated from the productions of living artists. The collections, moreover, are usually split up into different rooms corresponding to various periods, schools, etc., according to the pedagogic system of the 19th century. Few as yet dare to wed the holy water of antiquity with the devil of the avant-garde. At Sao Paulo, a start has been made, and the picture gallery, which consists of a single room, contains elements that we are so used to considering as distinct, both in period and expression, that the first sight of them side by side is quite a startling experience. The time is past when the antiquarian, in a dim room draped in velvet with some awful system of lighting, would dramatically isolate a piece of sculpture, imposing on the beholder an atmosphere of a wet silence and so forth, which merely resulted in his being thrust back from the work of art instead of being brought closer to it. 
In the museum, a Calder mobile may be seen next to one of the Gas Ballet Girls, as any kind of exhibition serves to inspire and spread ideas, to combine them in new ways which may give new pleasures both to the senses and to the intellect. So, all kinds of combinations, juxtapositions and correlations may serve as an aid to understanding and set the mind working on new lines. All this is obvious enough to anyone who does not believe in the fable of progress and regress in the arts, but understands that every work of art has its own validity with which it may enter into any number of relations in space and time. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.